नमस्कार आई एम रवींद्र काटोटी फ्रॉम बेंगलोर कर्नाटका आई एम अ हारमोनियम आर्टिस्ट टुडे आई एम हियर टू शेयर विथ यू माई व्यूज आइडियाज अबाउट हारमोनियम एज एन इंस्ट्रूमेंट एंड सर्टेन आस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ लर्निंग हारमोनियम हारमोनियम इज very interesting and wonderful instrument it symbolizes the tremendous digestion capacity of indian culture to assimilate foreign things concepts ideas languages cultures etiquettes and so forth even though french in origin harmonium has become part and parcel of indian culture music and society it is an ubiquitous instrument you can find it at all the realms of socio cultural activities may it be classical music concert or it may be qawwali mushaira it may be bhajan or kirtan it may be a music recording studio it may be a rashtrapati bhavan concert or it may be even a street side beggar so wherever you may find this instrument everywhere it has carved its own place in our socio cultural setup on the basis of the number of lines of reeds so this we call as lines we have single line double line triple line and four line harmonies so for single line harmonies there will be only only one line of reeds as this harmony has got so if this is open you can see only one line of reeds so this harmony which i have been playing so it is a double line harmony it has got two lines of reeds so that gives us a deeper uh, tones of sur we have got one more set that is of triple line harmonies so in addition to these two lines one more line will be there and some harmonies they will be having four lines <coughs> on the basis of scales the type of scale we have got again different varieties one is fixed scale harmonium so this one is fixed scale the scales are fixed there is one more variety shift scale harmonium or shifted scale so here in fixed scale original fixed scale harmonium the the scale as well as pitch they are same that means f plays for f g plays for g c plays for c but in case of a shift scale harmonium the scales have been shifted so in case of this harmonium my harmonium the so d pitch has been shifted to f that's why it is called shift scale harmonium there is one more kind of harmonium that is called change changing scale harmonium or scale changer harmonium wherein you can literally shift the scales change the scales from one uh, one note to another note say from c sharp to say d from f to a whatever whichever is convenient for your playing for your fingering you can change the scales that is called scale changer harmonium on the basis of uh, positioning of reeds we have uh, vertical reed harmonium so here the reeds are vertical and horizontally reed harmonium that is flat reed harmoniums so instead of vertical reeds the reeds will be placed horizontally flat the suitability as far as suitability is concerned so vertical harmoniums they sound better than flat reed harmoniums because these flat reeds they give a rather uh, slightly uh, rough sound the sound will be uh, rough as compared to vertical reeds <coughs> then on the basis of structure we have got again different types of harmoniums one is on one side we have got leg harmoniums 
as we are seeing here and one more is beta harmoniums so the beta harmonium as we play regularly and as we see regularly in our concerts now let me let me explain you leg harmonium leg harmonium is one of the oldest variants of harmoniums from reed organs we got leg harmoniums here the air is pumped by pedaling bellows so then the whatever air that is collected inside passes through these pipes which enters the air chamber inside and when we play the keys the reeds vibrate and harmonium sounds so the the major privilege of this leg harmonium is we can use both the hands and play the tunes or songs as against this leg harmonium for which we have to sit on a chair and while playing so these are the baitak harmoniums that means we have to sit on the floor which is more convenient for indian music and the style of performance of indian music so these are called baitak harmoniums again we have got again two types one is box type which is regularly formed this is box type it looks like a box so this is a folding harmonium this way it was folded now so looking at the bellows type of bellows we can have again two types of harmonium one is top fold bellows and side fold bellows so it is of top, this is the top fold bellow harmonium so where the bellows fold and fold from the top whereas in this harmonium bellows fold and fold from as particular side if you are a right hand player they will open on left side if you are a left hand player they will open on right side now let us see different types of reeds of harmonium there are three different types of reeds one is bass male and female in colloquial indian languages we call bass as kharj male as nar and female as madi a middle octave reed or note that is male its corresponding lower octave reed is bass its corresponding higher octave is madi so like that we have got kharjnar harmoniums nernar harmoniums kharjnar madi harmoniums a nernar harmonium is one wherein both the lines are male 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 so both the lines are male so it is nernar harmonium it sounds like this <laughs> so whereas a kharjnar harmonium wherein one line is kharj and another line is nar it sounds like this so in case of a kharjnar madi triple line harmonium the sound will be like this so this combination of all the three kinds of reeds it is very much helpful conducive in case of harikatha kirtans ghazals or light music or say mushairas even because of dramas so triple line harmoniums are used like that depending upon the size of reeds or the dimension of reeds we have got again two kinds of reeds one is standard reeds another is harp reeds standard reeds they look like this they have their width is normal standard size whereas harp reeds their width is lesser that is they are narrower so these harp reeds they play with minimum air their uh, tone is bit sharper and firmer for solo playing particularly these harp reeds are preferred much more one more variety of harmonium is harmonium with couplers a facility called coupler so it is provided in the harmonium if you operate this coupler so for pressing every note a corresponding lower octave note will be pressed automatically so which gives us a deeper uh, tone the harmonium gives a richer uh, sound <laughs>
Now, let me explain you the structure and design of harmonium. So, these are called external bellows. We call them in colloquial language as bhata or bhati. <coughs> so, when we the bhatas are unfolded, the valves get open, they are opened, the air enters inside, and when we press the bellows, whatever air is there in external bellows that passes to the internal bellows, it passes to the internal bellows. So, this internal bellows they are inside, so I cannot show right now. So, there is a spring, strong spring below this internal bellows. So, when an air enters internal bellows, the bellows they they, inf they are inflated. So, with the inflation of internal bellows, the spring inside it gets compressed. After once we let out the external bellows, the compressed spring starts stretching. So, when it starts stretching, the internal bellows they push the air into this chamber. This is called sounder of the harmonium. Here, the harmonium reeds are placed. So, once the air enters this chamber, it starts circulating there. And whenever we press, when we press the key, when we press a particular key, the air passes through, through this reed. And when the reed vibrates, it produces the sound. It is how harmonium sounds. This is called the board. This board, it has got air stoppers. So, these air stoppers, they either open the holes or close the holes. This gives us a choice to play a particular line of reeds or not to play a particular line of reeds. So, even though we have got three lines of reeds, we can play only those lines of our choice. Suppose if a harmonium is Kharj Nar Madi, we can play either Kharj or Kharj Nar or Kharj Nar Madi or Nar Madi or only Madi line. Okay. Now let us see how a harmonium is tuned. So, as we know, harmonium is a free reed instrument where the reed has a base end and a free end. Now, when you want to tune an instrument, suppose if you want to increase the pitch or sure of the a particular reed, then we have to file at free end. If we file at free end, the pitch increases. If we file at base end, the pitch decreases. Some harmonium players or harmonium tuners, they use wax, wax to tune harmoniums. They apply wax at base end to increase the pitch. They apply wax at free end to decrease the pitch or bring down the pitch. But the usage of wax, it muffles or it uh, uh, it reduces the tonal quality of the reeds. So, it is better to file the ends, base ends or open ends. There are mainly two types of tunings. One is tempered scale tuning, another is Gandhar tuning. In case of tempered scale tuning, all the notes, they are equidistant. That means, the internote distance is same. Here, this tempered scale, it is almost same as uh, piano scale, western scale. When we come to Indian classical music, this tempered scale does not fully suit the requirements of Indian classical music. That is why we use, we apply or we uh, uh, tune the harmonium in a different way that is called Gandhar tuning. So, in Gandhar tuning harmonium, the madhyam, 
is lower than tempered scale madhyam panchum is higher than tempered scale panchum gandhar and dhaivat they are much much below than the tempered scale gandhar and other uh, notes say re ga uh, maybe shuddha rishab komal rishab komal gandhar tivra madhyam komal dhaivat komal nishar and shuddha nishar they are tuned with uh, precision and judgment for a particular scale and if harmonium is uh, tuned for a particular scale with gandhar tuning it has to be used for that particular scale only for example if you tune a particular harmonium for f with gandhar tuning then you have to use that harmonium for f scale only you cannot play um, harmonium for any other scale maybe say d or e or c sharp whatever because if you use it for some other scale it will not give a surreal playing a tuneful playing <laughs> as far as sitting postures while playing harmonium are concerned usually players sit like this cross legged just and they can play harmonium some others they may sit like this and play harmonium so those who are uncomfortable playing harmonium while sitting on floor they can sit on a chair and put the harmonium on a stool or another chair and play it and in uh, dindis where uh, these devotees they uh, walk along the road singing bhajans even some people they uh, tie a strip to the side handles of harmoniums and they just hang it to their neck and play it's also one of the postures as far as playing techniques of harmonium is concerned with right hand we play on keyboard and the left hand is engaged in pressing bellows to take air inside the harmonium the bellows are very important part the manipulation or playing pressing of bellows is very important of important part of harmonium playing it is as important as respiration for a human being shwas the way we take in the air that is most important thing it it not only decides the flow of our play it decides the volume of the notes it also has got a very direct effect over the emotional part or expressions of harmony playing so when we press the bellows we should take care that we are playing harmonium with minimum possible air if we take too much of air so that that will create a loud noise that will bring down the clarity and the expression content of harmonium playing it is disturbed not only that too much of air intake may uh, it may damage spring it may damage the internal bellows it may damage the uh, reeds also sometimes <laughs> So I'd like to share with you um, my views and ideas about fingerings. Now, when we play harmonium, when we sit for playing harmonium, the most important thing is that the wrist, the wrist level should be above keyboard. The wrist level should be above keyboard. The hand should not cling to the keyboard; it should be above keyboard. and the fingers they should come from above and they should gently move on the keyboard and when we play 
we should press the keys gently. There is no strength, no force required for pressing the keys. The incidence of force has to be on the tip of the fingers. We should play harmonium. And the fingers should be placed with easiness in a relaxed position. There should not be any stretch or tension of any sort. So any kind of tension it will make the playing rough. If the playing becomes rough with some sort of tension or whatever. Now, along with my disciple Master Chirag. Namaskar. So I shall demonstrate how fingering techniques are followed while playing harmony. So I have given numbers to these fingers. Thumb number 1, number 2, number 3, number 4. Now I am teaching him in 5-4 scale, that is F. So he will be playing harmonium in F, I am teaching him in F and I shall be demonstrating the fingering techniques for playing F scale. Okay, now we will be playing Sare Gama Padanisa. So, for Sa, this is number 1, thumb. For Re, number 2. For Ka, number 3. For Ma, number 4. Again, for Pa, number 1. The, number 2. Ni, number 3. And Upper Sa, number 4. Let us play Sare Gama Padanisa. Sare Gama Padanisa. Sani da Now let us play Sare Gama Padanisa. Start. progression we will be having different patterns and phrases now play lesson number 2 sa re re ga ga ma ma pa like that Thank you. 
lesson is going to be sa re ga re ga ma ga ma pa ma pa da pa da ni da ni sa This lesson will be prefixed by first two notes. Sare ga will be prefixed by sare. That is sare sare ga, sare sare ga, re ga re ga ma. Like that. Okay. Shall we play in uh, first speed and second speed? Okay. One, two, three. possibilities of phrases we can form as many varieties of phrases and we can form as many lessons so this is just for introduction of our original finger so far whatever lessons we have played the fingering has been the same number 1 for sa number 2 for re number 3 for ga number 4 for ma and number again one for pa the ni and sa now let us take up some patterns or lessons wherein there will be slight change of fingering the reason for changing the fingering is to achieve continuity and fluency of playing now let us take up a lesson of sa re ga ma re ga ma pa i let you know where the fingering changes first i will play just look here and we play gama pada it is 3414 again what is the fingering 1 2 3 4 now play sorry no Thank you. 
provision shall be re sa ga re ma ga pa ma dha pa ni da sa ni re sa okay so let's play it so where are the fingering changes i will show you first so when you are playing perma instead of playing 1 4 you have to play 1 2 see dha pa instead of playing 2 1 you are playing 4 okay re sa also instead of playing 2 1 you are playing 4 1 okay we shall play this lesson phrase twice re sa re sa ga re ga re ma ga ma ga like that okay Progression shall be alternative notes. Sa ga re ma ga pa ma dha pa ni da sa. I will show you how the fingering changes for this particular. Did you notice? When we are playing ma dha, it I am playing two four. Actually, for ma it is four, for dha it is two. The fingering is reversed here. You play this. Very good. shall do we shall combine the previous lesson and this lesson and we'll make a new pattern previous lesson was re sa ga re ma ga this lesson was sa ga re ma ga and we'll combine them and we'll make it sa ga re sa re ma ga re ga pa ma ga shall we play it okay start fingering, fingering will be same thing so whatever fingering we followed in previous two lessons same thing will be combined for this lesson start it Very good. 
So far, I have shown you the fingering techniques for say scale F that is white 4. Now if we play in black 1 that is C sharp, how the fingering will differ that we will see. So Sa will be playing with number 2 that is We can play as many patterns in black one too. Now I shall show you the fingering for black four that is G sharp. different patterns and lessons in black 4 also. Now I shall teach you Rag Bhup. Rag Bhup is from Kalyan Thart. It is called an Oda Rag that is means that means a rag of five notes. Sa Re Ga Pa Dha Sa. So Ma and Ni they are virgin they are absent in this scale. Now play La Roha. Sa re ga pa da sa Sa re pa da re sa This is aroha and avaroha now you play a small vistara, I'll tell you. Sadha pa. Now I'll show you line by line, you follow me. Okay. It starts from some 
It has been used as an accompanying instrument. It has got much more potential as a solo instrument also. Now, I shall make an endeavor to present a harmonium solo. So, I shall play rag this. Thank you. 
this dvd will come to your help in understanding the instrument and the learning techniques of harmonium and it will be a step first step towards getting proficiency fluency and mastery over the instrument and develop love and affection towards the instrument i heartily thank super audio company for providing me an opportunity to reach you in our combined effort to promote and popularize harmony thank you namaste